About a month ago, I was invited to go and give a talk at the MMEA Scout Group, and uh, we decided to, at the time I would record it. Actually, we've updated the uh, the presentation, got new material in there, and today we're going to have a whistle stop tour of Trove in the MMEA region. What does that stand for? Mediterranean, Middle East, and Africa. These are sort of the countries that uh, that are going to be covered. Now, this was only a twenty minute talk, so. Uh, Gonna have to move quickly even for this video now reminder all our videos available you're on the channel now make sure you subscribe and ring the bell if you want to be notified when we bring out a new release we've over 200 videos had over a third of a million views and uh, a big milestone we just passed very recently We've got over 5,000 subscribers to the channel now, so uh, that's great news. We don't just cover the Mediterranean, Middle East and Africa. We cover the entire globe and there's our uh, coverage. It's growing all the time, week by week. It, we're getting more and more material. It's probably the, the largest technical subsurface and infrastructure database in the world. Lots of material. I didn't understand why in the legend here we had uh, the Edi field in Nigeria and the How field in, in UK um, highlighted. And then I remembered that, uh, that Matthew, well, he's a Newcastle United fan. That's a bit of a football joke, so if you're not interested in Premier League football, then that's going to be lost on you and uh, almost lost on me. Enough of the preamble. Let's get on with some examples. So a quick look at the Middle East. They're the countries that uh, we cover in this region. We have over an hour's worth of videos on our channel here. So if you see some of these titles and they're of interest, then uh, have a look around. Um, we do have a playlist, I think, for the Middle East, and uh, you can actually have a look at those. What can we say? Well, limited opportunities for international companies. A lot of it's uh, covered by national oil companies. Lots of infrastructure and field development uh, projects, but uh, they tend to be for the majors and super majors helping out in the region there. We do see uh, little nuggets like the uh, Armani offshore, quite a frontier area that we think is uh, very exciting. And we did do something recently on the Iraq licensing round. And of course, uh, that's now been announced. We'll have a look at that. So here was the uh, the Iraq licensing round, the, the fifth plus round and the sixth round. We could have a look at, say, the, the Allen field. I think we uh, showed this in a previous video. So here is the Allen field. You can see this is our entry from our Trove database. Lots of information in there. And there's the background about the field. I'm not going to go into that now. Uh, it has been awarded. So there's the, uh, the fifth round. Um, we've also got... Uh, the East Baghdad, and um, just a quick look at production. Certainly, uh, Iraq is is looking to uh, continue the upward trend in production, and also uh, for both oil and gas. So, uh, some very interesting opportunities in the area. If we look now at the results, there's 29 onshore blocks. 20 companies had pre-qualified, um, and they were European, Chinese, uh, Arabic, and Iraqi firms, but uh, no U.S. oil majors. There was a comment that, that there had been a trade delegation to the U.S., but it had only been a month before the round closed, and these things, they do take some time to actually have a look, get the data, to do the evaluation, and, and decide where you want to go. You can see here that some companies, you know, if they didn't start with Trove as, as a starting point, well, they've got no chance of getting up to speed in time. Six gas assets were, were not licensed, we know that, but these are the blocks that were awarded and they're listed down here, uh, and you can see the successful bidders, and um, kind of had a go at trying to work out the uh, some of these, many of these companies I, I didn't recognise uh, too well. S some are obviously well known to, to us all, but um, you can see there that the majority of companies were either Chinese or um, or Iraqi, so uh, or Kurdish companies. I'm not too sure what uh, where Anton Oil is, is uh, originates from, and you can see these are the uh, the map, the awards. Moving on swiftly, we're going to just have a quick look at the Eastern Mediterranean. There's the countries that are included in Trove. If we're to tr characterise this region, well, there's some 280 fields and discoveries in the region. Egypt obviously uh, dominates the reservoir age. Well, we're looking at tertiary in the main. Gas predominant in the area, not that many oil discoveries to date. Mainly uh, delta, so either very shallow water or onshore. Uh, and also then you see a growing number of uh, deep water and some ultra deep water in the region. You can see that uh, in this uh, in this graphic here, you can see that it's really since 2000 that the uh, deep water has really taken off. 
and uh, you can see an increasing number of wells going deeper and deeper and uh, we can see that trend continuing as we move forward. Now here's a, here's a map and just highlighting some of the fields that we've covered in the region. You can see uh, Baltim, Raven, Zor, Aphrodite. We also look at uh, bid round data. We've got information on pipelines, on prospects and data rooms, and indeed some block evaluations. So if you want to know about this region, you must have Trove. It's the starting point for any company looking in this region. So videos in the Eastern Med, well, we've got a number of those. We've got the Eastern Med update, several of them, and what's happening offshore in Cyprus. And you can see some of the things that we cover on each of those videos. So pause the video, take a look, go and have a look at the videos if uh, some of that's of interest. Moving swiftly to West Africa, another region we've done quite a number of videos on here. We've, we've looked at Angola, uh, individual wells. We've looked at uh, Nigeria, uh, two videos on that, and uh, some other really interesting fields. We know that there's a lot of wells that we're watching in 2024 in the region, and you can see our coverage here. Absolutely, um, the Niger Delta, very, very uh, well populated, lots and lots of oil fields and, and also various countries, Gabon, Congo, down into Angola. And then you can see in uh, Namibia, well, they're generally the black dots are, are just wells. And when we have every dry hole, every license, all the DSDP wells, as long as all the onshore material. Uh, and of course, we've got all the uh, recent discoveries in the Orange Basin and then we turn turn the corner at the bottom, and then you've got the um, Brule Padders, uh, and you've got the Utanika Basin, and the Algoa Gamtus, and um, also the Bredestorp Basin. So looking at Nigeria, for an example, you can see huge number of fields here, and we've got details on every field that's on that map there. So if it's a region you're looking at, definitely look at Trove. Likewise, here's Ivory Coast and Ghana, uh, and you can see we've done a, a video here on the uh, the Jubilee field, and, and also we've done a video on the Baleen field. We have talked about our wells to watch for 2024. Uh, you can see here showing all the South Atlantic fields that we were, uh, were keeping an eye on these wells. Uh, we'll not worry about the uh, the western side of the South Atlantic, but these are the uh, these are the wells that we're looking at. A couple of them you can see highlighted here in green uh, are already known to be discoveries, Moran uh, and also the Mapani, uh, two wells there being fantastic uh, discoveries for Galp, offshore Namibia, and uh, we'll be watching the rest of those. Lots of videos you can watch, over 36,000 views of our uh, Venus One video. Um, and you can see within Trove, we just keep updating with maps and maps and maps and maps. Just the uh, latest and greatest as things develop. And as you follow this, you can actually see how the basin is evolving and uh, lots, of, uh, lots of both up-to-date maps and historic snapshots of what it was like as this basin opens up. Here an example, we did a video looking at the results that included Mapani. Pause the video and just have a look at these are the, the highlights as we know it today. Rumoured to be very, very big, but we don't get too excited with just a single exploration well, or in this case of Mapani, there's, there's two wells in there. Uh, we like to see some appraisal drilling before that we feel that you can firm up on the uh, on the massive re massive uh, resources and reserves that people are claiming but you know a great start here's the uh, the offshore region this is mainly uh, namibia and south africa uh, you can see these are the opportunities that we hold within trove and it covers just about everything you know it's hard to spot venus and some of the other discoveries in the region because to avoid overprinting, they're not being shown. But you can see everything from the Namib Basin, where we're anticipating a well, just across the border in Angola, but it's in the Namib Basin. There's activity in the Walvis, the Luderitz, uh, obviously the Orange Basin taking a lot of activity there. And Utanika, well, we haven't seen anything uh, happening there for a while, but uh, we'll be watching to uh, see any development. Uh, the Venus uh, tab that we've got in our Trove database 
And just by looking at that, you can see there's a huge amount of data and material all pulled together. Lots to uh, to be able to understand what that play is all about. Likewise, there's open entry for Brule Padder. And uh, there's Mapani. I mean, not very much out in the public domain yet, but as it gets added, we'll be adding to these entries. Now, going up to the uh, northwest of Africa, and uh, you can see here, this is the MSGBC. Well, what does that stand for? Well, it stands for Mauritania, Senegal, Guinea-Bissau, and Conquery, which is guinea Conquery. So you can see it's basically just that entire margin down there. We, uh, we recently did a video on uh, Sangamar, the development that's uh, about to come on stream imminently. And in that video, we looked at the, the two plays. We see a lot of these deep water turbidites coming down these, uh, these, these channels. And, and then sometimes the base of slope turbidite fans, sometimes they'll kind of get spread out and become more like a contrite. But Sangamar was, uh, was very interesting because it's one of these pro delta aprons. It's actually up on the shelf it's a play that you know we've uh, we have looked for in uh, up and down the the region and uh, not always been successful but uh, sangamar has been a great success there's some more information on it pause the video if you want to find out more about sangamar we're thinking uh, we may be doing a, a video on the gta area and um, then this is bp's uh, upcoming project and uh, yeah, the, I think a, a, a good subject for a future video. So if anybody uh, wants to get involved in that, get in touch. So in East Africa, well, a few videos there. There's been activity down in Mozambique's Angosh Basin. The first well drilled there uh, What was a dry hole. We're awaiting the, the second well to be drilled in the region. And of course, into the Ravuma Basin, Coral Sul or Coral Sud or Coral South, as it can be known. That's this massive floating liquefied natural gas vessel that started producing uh, in 2022 it's really just the start for this region there's somewhere between 80 and 100 tcf of gas in this region and it's still relatively immature in terms of exploration so um, we're not going to be talking about mccoy we'll wait and see what happens with their test results yes here's a quick look at the geology for the region tanzania mozambique all of this is covered. We uh, cover all the geology within the, for the various basins up and down the stratigraphy. Looking onshore, well, we were recently contacted by Recon Africa. Now, they're getting ready to uh, spud their uh, name Ngopo. Oh, that's a, my latest mispronunciation. I've got to try them in all sorts of languages and get so many of them wrong. But hey-ho. Let's carry on regardless. June 2024, we expect the spud. So we met with the team in um, late May 2024. I'm kind of impressed. They, they've now gone with a, a group of uh, experienced prospect generators. And, and, and they've got a kind of a, a far better story to, to tell. I won't say too much about the three wells that have gone down to date. They were very odd. Uh, robust, long-lived structures. Um, now, a lot of the source rocks, if not all the source rocks, um, they've kind of been right through the uh, the oil window, the, the maturity window, and uh, sort of burnt out now, quite relatively uh, low TOCs remaining. But, of course, that means that all the uh, hydrocarbon that may have been present has been generated and migrated. But those events, um, well, a lot of them are 450 million years ago, so how much is going to be trapped and retained in these structures? I kind of like these structures. They, they do look even on this seismic here. You can see the reflectors. They map out well. There are lots of them, and the idea is that um, they're going to drill two of them fully funded for both wells, and uh, we wish Recon Africa every success. We'll be reporting back when we get the results. Should be around about September, maybe uh, October. Jumping back to the east coast of Africa, Zanzibar is holding its first licensing round, and there's the block shown. Lots of seismic over the eight blocks that are, are in the round, and there's a five-year expiration term on here. That's through the Ministry of Blue Economy and Fisheries. There you go. I've not heard of one of those before. Yeah, lots of uh, stranded gas to the south. The region, very, very remote from uh, from the markets for selling the any product that's found. But uh, 
Very few wells, uh, none offshore, a couple back in the 50s onshore, and uh, it, it, Zanzibar is an autonomous region of Tanzania, which will be holding a licensing round in the second half of 2024. Watch this channel and we'll try and promote that round when we find out more information about it. Get in touch, guys. Now, this is a region that we really like, North Africa. And uh, here are the highlights for North Africa. You can see this is from the Energy Institute, the top 10 countries listed in order of uh, reserves remaining. You can see in 10th is Libya, 48 billion barrels of oil uh, still remaining. And uh, that's only uh, 2.8. But add all those together in the Middle East, you see it's about 49% of all the oil that's remaining is in that region. For Libya in particular, at the current rate of uh, production, there's still 339 years of production to go. Well, that's got more to do with the, uh, with the fact that there has been such a disruption in the region. We do know in the qu fourth quarter of this year, or the first quarter of 2025, we're expecting that Libya's uh, National Oil Corporation is going to uh, be launching a, a licensing round. Now, they are targeting 2 million barrels of oil production a day. We'll see in a minute. They're quite a long way short of that currently. Um, so 48 billion barrels of reserves still to prove, and 53 TCF of gas. Now, there's our map of the region. That's everything we have um, in trove that they're not all highlighted but we can actually see many of the uh, the field and discovery names in there um so there's some of the basins there you can see that uh, it's in recent years the uh, the crude production it's been uh, very erratic uh, it was able to do uh, you know 1.4 1.5 million barrels of oil per day but in recent times uh, has failed to achieve those heady heights and um, and basically the the, uh, the country is looking to to try and move towards 2 million barrels of oil per day. Yes, there are still some, some issues. There's uh, There are two governments here, one in the west and one in the east, and you can see they're, they're uh, competing uh, zones of, uh, of, of influence, uh, the administration areas. But, you know, hopefully uh, there's, it's moving forward. A quick look um, further east, and uh, this is in our trove, South Asia, and you can see from the flags there, we cover quite a lot of countries in here. But um, more importantly, the basins are listed there, all the way from Kambay, uh, Krishna Godavari, Mumbai, Kavri, all the way down to some of the smaller basins. We have data all over the region here, lots of details on all the major fields and discoveries in the region. And uh, there's, the, there's the map showing the, the region. Uh, it also includes some of the, the recent discoveries that have been made in this area. Don't forget, we have renewables as well. Within the uh, the MMEA region, uh, these are the projects we found. Um, so we have listed uh, 24 carbon capture projects. Only four of them are in Africa in various stages of planning. So, um, you know, we see that in Africa it's actually diff difficult to fund oil and gas projects. So I think it could be very difficult to fund uh, carbon capture. Also, you know, it's a, it's a huge landmass with... Um, with sort of uh, lots of distance between uh, various major industrial concentrations. So, you know, CCUS would kind of probably be targeting refineries, terminals, and, uh, and major cities with, with a lot of um, heavy industry. But they are the, uh, the projects that we have listed, and we have details in all of those. Our carbon capture, well, it's, uh, it's truly global. In terms of countries, you can see it's the USA that leads the way. UK got a lot of projects and you can get, see on down the list lots of countries getting more and more involved and looking at projects to take forward. The usage uh, or the, uh, the fate for the CO2, well we have many many saline aquifer projects, quite a number of them are um, enhanced oil recovery projects and uh, we, we have some other varieties in there so get in touch if you want to know more about carbon capture. If your company is involved in uh, carbon capture, then you do really need to understand what happened at uh, Insala in Algeria, a blown seal. And uh, also understand some of the operational challenges that, uh, that Chevron have had. Um, I think predominantly down to do uh, with the produced water reinjection, rather carbon injection into the, uh, the reservoir itself. But uh, you can see there the trove, trove entries and you can see 
we cover all the evolution the the project stage and all the latest news that we get we add daily geothermal in the region well number of uh, projects we have listed not that many uh, these are the countries we have them listed for only nine in trove um, mainly they're operational and uh, generally um, the issue is going to be you know are they in proximity to industry that's going to to need the the energy and um, and to cities or at population centers examples are al Karia in uh, kenya and uh, here's the trove entry for that and and also you can see here a country review if you're looking at geothermal we have country reviews for oh, most of the countries in the world so our free trial offer all you have to do send us an email nominate a country you'd like data on sign a kind of a, a standard pro forma um, license agreement and we'll deliver you trove the next day we think you'll like trove so much that you'll be coming back for more so that's the offer please get in touch well for those who are keen on statistics you can have a feast here all i'm going to say is that we've got over a million data points now collated tabulated searchable with the click of a button the global it's an audit trail we've got scouting information we've got analogs we've got over a quarter of a million articles now uh, we keep trove evergreen it grows every day and it's uh, also enabled for gis you can put it straight onto your system this is an idea of uh, of how trove grows and if we look back to say two years you can see that we've actually grown this by about 20 percent a year so get in touch that's the uh, that's the QR code, but as you're watching the channel right now, you probably aren't going to need that, but you can always send that on to uh, some of your colleagues. You can get them to watch the channel. Um, we uh, Send us an email, let us know if you'd like a free trial, and uh, please uh, like, support, ring the bell, give us a thumbs up. It all helps. Um, we get paid very, very little for these videos, and if we do uh, want to keep them and you want to keep seeing them, then... Uh, uh, we, we do need your support um, to keep the channel free. Thank you for watching. I hope you found that interesting. Please hit the like, subscribe, and ring the bell. Hope to see you back on our channel before too long. Bye for now.